The International Police Organization, Interpol, works with law enforcement agencies worldwide to apprehend criminals. Recently, I spoke with Ronald Noble, the Secretary General of Interpol, and asked him if his organization is collaborating with the International Criminal Court on the arrest warrant for Sudan's President Omar al-Bashir. When the International Criminal Court issues an arrest warrant, any country that signed the treaty is responsible and obligated to enforce it. When Interpol communicates to the world that a country seeks the arrest of someone via Interpol, it's up to the country to decide whether or not they want to respect another country's request for arrest. So with regard to the International Criminal Court, they decide when they want to use Interpol to communicate to the world that someone sought for arrest. But in a case of uh, President Bashir, the International Criminal Court has not asked Interpol to communicate to the world because the whole world knows that uh, he's wanted for arrest by the ICC. What do you do uh, in terms of uh, ensuring that a country can be forced to comply with certain international laws? Yeah. We exist by believing that it's important for there to be a police organization that allows countries to cooperate voluntarily. So we don't have sanctions that are imposed against countries for not complying with international law. So you can be helpless on the field. But, but not helpless. Not, 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 not helpless because we believe that a country is responsible for its acts or its failure to act. So if a country is consciously and knowingly harboring a terrorist and that terrorist engages in uh, activity harming the citizens of that country, the country suffers. What we believe is we should make transparent the fact that the person's wanted so that other countries can protect themselves or countries can take measures on a bilateral basis to bring someone to justice. There's no way you can get all countries in the world to agree with one another's requests for arrest. How do you help African nations, for instance, apprehend international drug traffickers who are having a field day in some of the African nations? Well, we have 53 member countries that come from our African region. And in Africa, we have what are called four sub-regional bureaus in Western, Central, Eastern, and Southern Africa, where African police go to share information, to do cross-border operations together, and to improve their ability to investigate cases. Second thing we do is we work very closely with the chiefs of police in Africa, regional chiefs of police bodies. And when they set their agenda for regional policing, we try to integrate that agenda with global policing. Right now, there is a real, real surge in drug trafficking originating from South America, going to Western Africa, and using Western Africa as a springboard to Russia, uh, to uh, Europe. When it comes to fugitives, uh, African uh, people, perhaps politicians or wherever they may be who have committed certain crimes and they become fugitives in other countries, uh, is there a role Interpol can play in uh, getting these guys to justice? We play uh, a variety of roles. One thing we try to do is we try to help the country communicate to the world that this person is wanted for crime X, Y, or Z. Oftentimes, and unfortunately, it's corruption. So Interpol helps alert other countries the person's name, and if we have fingerprints or DNA profile, we put it in our database. And if the person, the fugitive, goes anywhere in the world and comes across a police officer who searches Interpol's database, the African country will know where to find him. And that's a very, very important function we play, and Africa is a very important partner in that regard.